That is one heck of a bait to make in one day. Excuse me. One day? The first one of this year. Would you call that a twofer? There's gonna be one little body back here and a chatter blade above the little body connected to the big body. Let me replicate an extremely accurate representation of the action of this bait in the water. Okay, now that you all understand, let's get to work. Tupelo. Because if and when you have it, you use it. I wanna go over the reality of my situation. I think it was about this time last year I made an A-rig and it just did not produce any fish because I could only have two hooks on it because I live in Iowa. I'm gonna put three treble hooks on this thing. I haven't even looked up if that's against my regulations around here, but you know what? If we're counting treble hooks on one lure and the stores around here sell three treble hook lures all the time and I get in trouble for making my little chatter tail bait thing with a little fellow off the back and he's gonna have a treble hook off the back, so be it. I'll pay whatever fine, I don't care. Let me look it up. Okay, how many hooks can you have on a lure in Iowa? When fishing by hook and line, you cannot use more than two lines or more than two hooks on each line when still fishing or trolling. When you are trolling and bait casting, you cannot use more than two trolling spoons or artificial baits on one line. What about treble hooks? So there's three hooks on a treble hook. Whoever made this law didn't know. How many hooks can you use in Iowa? Two or three hooks on the same line. So it's just nobody knows. If you think about an encounter with a DNR officer, most of the time I don't get asked to see my license and then they talk about what they've caught that year. Usually it's mostly just them talking about what they've caught. It can be hard to get a word in. And then they say, well, good talking to you, see ya. So I'm not worried about it. You might have noticed all of the upswepness. I want this on the fall and that chatter bait's not gonna let it do anything but chatter on the retrieve. But still with these two baits connected and then the swept bellies and the kind of turbulence forming on top, tops, because it swept like that, it's gonna, the intention is flutter on the fall, chatter on the retrieve. Super thick head on this dude. I intend to try to fit a 3 8 inch hole in the bottom of this guy. Probably like two or three in this guy. Apparently these are guys. No ladies allowed here. Women don't watch my stuff. This is all for the fellas. And if you feel like commenting that girls watch my stuff too, I know what percentage of girls watch my stuff and let's just say scientifically it's negligible. If you're a girl and you're watching this, you're 2%. I hear that a lot of guys watch with their girlfriends though and wives, so. Maybe you're not 2%. Maybe you're like five, five percent. <laughs> This piece requires a huge honking 5 8 inch eyeball. I've gotten to the point where I can really eyeball the placement of eyeballs. Unfortunately, the only 5 8 inch Forstner bit I have is extremely dull, so this eye socket might not look the prettiest. I retract that statement, it looks fine. This one might accidentally poke its way to China. Whoopsie, 1015. Look at, you can see the face camera in there trying to do its thing. We started probably 15 minutes ago. Proof, redundant yet necessary requirement. Sometimes this, see what my finger's doing? This is the only way to hold stuff. Finger strength, man. You gotta clamp it in there. And to stop myself from turning this finger into ground beef, I don't let the blade come off of this thumb. You push the blade to this thumb and then you push with this thumb into the wood and then you have full control. You can have some skin hanging over on this side where you're carving and you're not gonna pop into it because you're not, you're not letting it come off your thumb. Unless you're cool like me and you don't care and you just, you kind of just use that as a benchmark and you still let it come off your thumb but you don't cut yourself anyway, I, I, I do that. You understand the theory. I feel a gaping finger wound coming. <laughs> after explaining how to safely carve. There's just blood everywhere. <laughs> My first thought is to paint this red. Something with a lot of red. Dude, did I think I just came up with a good name for this. The Chatter Buddy. It's the Chatter Buddy. Dude, there's so many times I wish I had this giant company that I could just throw these designs at and be like, there. Make a million of the Chatter Buddies. Get them sold. A million's too much, isn't it? It's probably like 10,000. Make 10,000 of the Chatter Buddies. You know, it's got the bait ball, umbrella rig, multiple things happening at once, five going on, but it's just two. It's three hooks, like a jerk bait, 
two baits, the Chatter Buddy. At least nobody can take the name now. I, ca I have the name because I said it first. Keep my bait's name out your fish and mouth. <laughs> wow. Why did that bounce? Why does that bounce? Look how far that bounces. It's like a bouncy ball. Maybe I'm overreacting. I guarantee you I'm overreacting. It happens every day. Ooh, bouncy ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. When I was a kid, I would always accidentally bounce a bouncy ball into the outlet blower of the wood burner. Like there's a little square on the side of the wood burner in our basement. You bounce around the bouncy ball and it always gets in there. And then my dad would light up the wood stove and the whole house would smell like rubber for an entire day. I think we had to get a hotel once because of that. That's a pretty interesting shape. It's almost, it almost reminds me of a frog. That's mama tadpole, this is baby tadpole. A little extra protein snack, eh? That was hot cross buns. Good old hot cross buns. That's gonna give me all of the necessary wireage. We're doing twist wires. Twist wires and twist wires, that's what we're doing. Line tie. Front hook hanger. Middle hook hanger. Rear hook hanger. Am I doing a direct connection? Ooh, that's a, I can, okay. I'm sure that made perfect sense to you guys. That is all I need to make for the two pieces to connect. Let's get some lead in this wood. And for the first one day of 2022, I remembered to plug in the lead pot. We're gonna go with all three eighth inch holes and three of them in this bait. Two in the big piece, they're gonna go pretty deep, probably to like halfway into the body. One in the last, as much as possible in the last. That should do it. This isn't a thick piece of Tupelo. And those are two large holes. I could feel it getting kind of hot where my finger was on the top of this bait. That's how I knew I was getting close. <laughs> oh! Bouncing everywhere. That is so much lead for such a tiny thing. It's gonna sink hard, but because it's gonna be at the back of the bait, I think that'll stabilize it nicely when I cast. Cast far. 0.18 before adding lead. Those holes were kind of connected, if you're confused. 0.68, exactly half ounce of lead in the first piece. Hot diddly, I'm good, man. That, exactly a half ounce. What is this gonna be exactly a quarter? Oh, I didn't even weigh it. <laughs> you know what, it would have been 0 0.03. I guarantee you it would have been 0 .03 if I weighed it. Usually before I super glue and baking soda, I dump some super glue on that. It kind of seals before the super glue and baking soda seals it over. I don't know. I feel like it helps secure the lead a little better too if you're just putting glue between it and the wood. Work it into the cracks and crevices. I need to go get more baking soda. I think this is a first. Where is the baking soda? We keep an ample supply of baking soda in my household. That should last me two more years. Tastes like pretzels in the air. Yeah, the fresh stuff, it takes super glue way better. It must be lower moisture. I need to remember to keep my baking soda fresh. I bet you never thought of baking soda in that way. Stale baking soda. Maybe some old grandma who cooks a lot understands it that way. Grandma can relate. The rear hook hanger and the front line tie are installed fully. Now these shall receive their super glue bath. If you're ever receiving a bath, you might want to proceed with caution. <laughs> if you get weirded out about me getting super glue all over my finger, don't worry. I live for it. It's one of my main purposes in life, to constantly have super gluey fingers. That piece is ready for battle. It's 
get all this installed. That connection is absolutely full of super glue. That connection right there needed to be horizontal instead of vertical. We're ready to paint. So the first color we're putting down is not a color. Okay, we have some hard Chinese UV resin. Squirt this in a cup. That was aqua green and gold color shift. That's gonna be our base. Whoa, bro, look at that. I'll be sure not to mix up 25 times more than I need next time. But that's right, this is going to have two UV clear coats on both pieces. What a start though. It's going in. I had it on the rotisserie for a bit. And I'm just going to twist it around for like 30 seconds and then it will be set and I can hang it and then shift it. Kind of in like 90 degree angles is what works best for me. Beautiful start. Let's get some more color on these. I think keeping with frog theme, I'm gonna use this stencil. And straight up red. That looks pretty interesting in real life. I hope the camera's doing the same thing with the color shift behind the opaque red. Oh boy. Lovely. That really stayed pretty clean. I'm already looking for eyes. I have smaller eye of Saurons, by the way. Possible option. It's like little zombie, small pupil. Those are kind of cool. A little bit of bleeding in there with the red, but just a normal eye. Silver, it's a possibility. Because the rear one is only getting solid black quarter inch. That's all I have for quarter inch that's gonna match. So we might need to go with something like that for them to match. Okay, pearly white belly, amphibian-like spot red stuff on the sides with color shift green behind it. And then just a little bit of black on the top. You can still see some color shift through, color shift. Same thing on this little dude. I'm good with that. I just keep saying chatter buddies in my mind. And it's, it's just freaking hilarious. I haven't opened this can in a while. Looking okay in there though. Nice. This one's ready for the tank. I think there might have been a drip on the belly of the big one. I can't see it right now, but once I stop turning this little piece, we'll see. This one's perfect. This one's good. Yeah, there's a little drip. You guys see that little bump? Oh man, everything went perfect on this build right up until then. There's a barely noticeable little bump on the belly. I need a UV box in my truck. Then they could cure on the way. That's genius. Oh, but then I'd have to assemble it. I might need my drill. Never mind. Maybe I do need the one day van. It all, it all just comes back to the one day van. I don't want to do the one day van. <laughs> Okay, I just don't want to fingerprint it up for the thumbnail. One second. We have that on. Now we need the little dude off of it. He's still in the UV tank. Forgot about him. The green on the top of this guy turned out really good. But that's the chatter buddy. Let's get the hooks on. What a fishing lure. I suppose a tied off treble hook would be nice, you know feathers and stuff. There's no time, it's a one day. Let's go. The ditch. I decided to go to the ditch first. The water is really high, pretty, pretty clear. Some piled up shad and whatnot littered around. Oh, thumbnail. What am I doing? This is not allowed off the pole until I get that thumbnail. The chatter buddy, first cast. I do feel some chitter chatter. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get closer. Man, that front one's wanting to roll, dang it. It's not a very stable action. 
but you can get it to really do stuff. I can't believe with a half ounce of lead in that front piece it's wanting to roll still. But with a lot of line out and a nice slow retrieve it really does, it's, it's not that hard to get it to run straight. But yeah, not the best action but there's a lot of flash and struggling. Yeah, it's pretty good if you go really slow. And that really is what I should be doing. It's a couple days later. One day failed. Not surprising though, you know? It was about after the first two hours of fishing there. That's when I knew. It's not gonna be easy. We're not giving up. I'm prepared to fish much more. Let's go. fishing spot is always an adventure to get to. They're not getting a lot of maple out of this one. I wonder why. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody saw except however many people watched this video. <laughs> okay, I'm not even gonna go near the water because there could be fish in there and I'm gonna be quiet. Oh, it smells like sewage. Lure's working good today, that's weird. I don't know what I'm being stealthy for. There's a train above my head. Wow. I would have been cool if I caught a fish with the train going by. Dang. Let's get a better look at the chatter buddy. Works all right. It's got to go that slow to stay upright. It's okay, chatter buddy. We'll get you on a fish. Dang, dude. I lost my buddy. This is like one of the saddest things that have ever happened on the channel. <laughs> I lost my buddy, man. I really should have changed out that clip for a stronger one. Dang it. Dude, that solar panel moves like once every minute. And it, brrr, brrr, it scares you. Looks like someone's coming up on you. That was a rough one day. And just like that, we miserably failed the first one day of the year. The action was not ideal. The lure broke. We didn't catch a fish. I slipped and fell. Whatever, man. I just had to wet my whistle. We'll get them next time. And at least I'm closer to the concept of the Chatter Buddy. Just because that name exists, that bait will exist and it will work perfectly. I'll figure it out. Ideally, when Chatter Bait season is in session. Thanks for watching. Video's over. On to the next bait. <laughs> No ladies allowed here. Ooh, bouncy ball. <laughs> Good talking to you, see ya. Clamp it in there. Oh, bouncing everywhere.